So, so you mentioned Isabella earlier, which I don't know. I don't know much of us would uh, ride for that book, even Ibram. And then, but so I want to, I want to ask this question. Um, so you talk about ethical systems and then even in the system, I saw the same things people who talk about Marxism, communism, socialism, anarchism argue. But um, in, in the book, you spend a lot of time on uh, Michel uh, Foucault and you actually highlight his dismissal of Marxism and Leninism, which you only touch lightly on. Um, it, it didn't seem like you uh, dealt with it uh, uh, enough. And I would have to say, I, I fully like I, just to add quickly. I, I just disagree, Doctor Dove, with how you describe Marx's uh, analysis of primitive accumulation. He was not being demeaning to African people. Yeah. He by calling he wasn't referring to primitive in the sense of primitive humanity. He was talking about the initial stage mm -hmm. of the accumulation yes. of resource. So, I so I don't. But anyway, that. but go ahead. But but go ahead. Yeah, no, I no, I but totally understand that. Um, you know, because like you. Uh, I've read Marx very, very deeply, and I was a Marxist myself. Um, but how culture helps in defining Marx's position is that um, he he doesn't include culture, obviously, in his analysis, but what he is analysing is culturally European. And um, he sees, he uses a, a step theory of, of evolution to say that what we used to do in the past is less, um, it is more primitive than what we're doing now. So he's using evolution as his foundational piece. And um, he is defining the way that, uh, uh, that uh, Europeans who, who we're looking at from Jilp's position the cradle theory position coming out of the northern cradle and the domination of the woman and then the construction of, 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 of uh, race and so on. What he does, uh, and he's brilliant at, at defining it, but he's saying that this is the future. Mm -hmm. He's saying that you have to go through this to get to a future where humanity can be more free. Um, but in that, in that representation, what he's doing is saying he's staying on the evolutionary path, but he's also inside the race paradigm. So he's looking at black humanity as inferior and as having to die for this future position of having wealth and then going to the next level where you have your uh, communism freedom ideas or socialistic ideas. But the thing is that we can look back in Africa and we can find these socialist ideas already existing, which is probably where he got this notion that there could be uh, a way of living peacefully and being a human being and acting out and becoming, you know, a developed person um, by his standards that he shows. But in this step, in this historical, cultural, race paradigm, he, he, he sees it as a necessary event, the enslavement of black people. Absolutely. And he sees that, you know, th th this is something that must happen. Uh -huh. And so he's really, not that it, it, that it has happened, but he's de diminishing the humanity of African people in defining this uh, European way of moving forward. Um, you can go back to Patahotep four and a half thousand years ago, who will tell you the same things that Marx is telling you from an African perspective, that greed and all these types of things are, uh, diminish your humanity. 
you know, and that is a mental illness. That is actually a disease, you know. So, so Marx is very, he's a brilliant man, and I don't take anything away from him. He's just a racist. And, um, you know, his future is based on the necessity of being capitalist and greedy and disgusting for however long that's going to last. Until Marx? we come. Wow, to- we wildly disagree <laughs> on our reading of Marx. Yeah. I don't agree well, with any yeah. of that. But yeah, but, but yeah, I, I, I can't. Even, I don't even know how we got there. <laughs> but okay, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, I I wrote this, you know, twenty five years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I, it's it's. Um, so I, I guess I guess I wonder I, I wonder why. Uh, so instead of spending more time which I, I guess I could get the answer there, but spending more honest time with Marx and Lenin, why did you decide to give so much uh, Michel uh, Foucault? Why did you? No, no, we didn't spend, a, 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 if I may, uh, uh, Brother Geechee, we didn't yeah. spend a lot of time with Foucault. We, we, I mean, I don't imagine we, 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 were, we were very interested in the question of power. We wrote about Maybe there's no more than a couple of pages where we dealt with Foucault's work. If my memory but Dr. Asante, let me ask you. Let me try to ask it this way. I'm yeah. sorry. Let me let me ask it this way because because similar to what Geechee is saying, for instance, because I have on my list of questions, I wanted yeah. to ask this too. You do for Marshall McLuhan, which I appreciated by uh-huh. the way. Uh huh what is not done for Marx That's and right. Marx is way more of a leftist and and, and, right. and meaningful for black revolutionaries than McLuhan. Well, that, so, that, so, that so part, that's now, why that, I'm saying like, well, well, that's, that's why I'm, that's a useful criticism. I don't, I don't have, I don't have, so that's, that's, that would be my only, only, point. only, so, only, so only I'm just saying, I'm just, just clear. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to defend Marx as oh, completely correct, right, right. but I am he saying is, that his positive yeah. impact on African people is way more important than I think is being given credit for here. While McLuhan, who has had no meaningful impact on African people, despite personally, I find his work interesting. I, I, he's given, he's given room to be well, corrected through Armand Towns's work, which I'm also enjoying myself. So well, I just thought Marx deserved better than that. That's okay, all. But okay, okay, go well, ahead. I, oh. I, I, I'm going to let that, I mean, certainly Dr. Dove will be writing more, I'm sure, on Marx. But let me just tell you my, 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 my response to that. Uh, McLuhan, I think, uh, because uh, both of us, uh, Dr. Dove at one time was associated with the State University of New York in Buffalo, and I was associated with that particular university. Uh, I got to meet uh, McLuhan before he died. So I knew McLuhan, uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, it was in a couple of seminars with him in Toronto and in, in Mexico. So I knew, I knew McLuhan, and I think that that may very well have, have come out in some of the writing the way, way it, it, it turns out about the interest in him because a lot of people have lost interest in him and yet he was one of the first people to really deal with the whole television age and period and of media and so on. So that that was what was important there. But in terms of Marx, let, let me just say this, that I, I agree with what uh, Dr. Dove has said and what you have said about the significance of Marx. I mean, Obviously, he is significant in uh, in uh, in uh, in world history, and a significant person in terms of the influence that he had on black intellectuals, particularly uh, on the African continent. But I always attribute that. Uh, in fact, in my one of my books, I wrote on this. I attribute that to George Padmore, because Padmore was the greatest propagandist for Marxism. Uh, during the Pan-African movement. He was, in fact, himself uh, organized, not organized, he was appointed, basically, uh, to be the leader in Washington, in D.C., to, when he came from Trinidad to go to school at Howard, uh, they sort of waylaid him and said, no, you're going to take this mantle and you're going to be, you're going you're gonna, to, you're going to be the person to push this idea. So George Padmore, when he left the U.S., and went to live in Europe and uh, ended up uh, finally in London, but he had lived in Germany and in Russia, he became the biggest promoter and propagandist for, uh, for, 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 for the uh, socialist position 
uh, in the African world. He, he is the major one. I mean, I went through all of his works. So you can, you can look at that. That's his influence on Nkrumah. That is his relationship with Du Bois. That's why people relate to it. And that's why the African continent when they started their independence movements, many of them said, "I'm not. We're not capitalists. We're socialists." But when 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 you had people to step back and think about what is the meaning of Africa in the context of this new movement of the 20th century, where do we go now in our own history and so on? Then you began people to think deeper. Well, Africa is thousands of years older than Marxism. We had so much more stuff going on. Why are we caught in this paradigm? Isn't there, aren't there paradigms that come out of our own history? Don't we have intellectuals and prophets and thinkers and men and women of intelligence who can come up with ways, the patterns of living? Didn't we live in stability for thousands, hundreds of years, at least? I, uh, I, hate, I hate to interrupt, Rick, one question. Yeah, so I, I, I want, so I wonder if 